Hey guys, I decided to go with a change of clothes for the second half of this review to more accurately reflect how I feel about myself and my role in this whole thing. I feel like a superhero with jaundice. Get used to this, because it's the most character change you're going to get from this whole experience. I'm starting to get anxious being stuck in this bed all the time. Is something wrong? You okay? When you put your hand on mine, we had ten fingers. I never realized it before. My world is changed forever. I'm sorry, but if the show isn't going to give us any insight into what these characters are thinking, I'm just going to assume the dumbest. Because I hate this. Takayuki's never-ending quest to reach out to his narcissist girlfriend with yet another personal call he makes from work. Seriously, how do any of these idiots stay employed here? Just wanted to say I was sorry for being late yesterday. Oh. So was that it? What? Is that all you were calling for? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Do you want to go out later? I can't. There's this company thing. I'll let you go then. Sorry to bother you in the middle of the day. No. I'm glad you called. Have fun at work. You know, I gotta say, if I were in Takayuki's shoes, I would have no idea what the hell is going on here. And as a viewer, I'm even more confused. Takayuki starts out by apologizing for coming home late, and Mitsuki does not forgive him in response. Then, he thanks her for the dinner she cooked while she zones out staring at Susan the Stupid. Well, what was that? Is she fantasizing about sitting at the table? Then she cuts Takayuki off by implying that apologizing for his mistake and thanking her for the things she does for him isn't a good enough reason to call her, in a hostile tone no less, before then thanking him for calling her. I... what? I feel a sense of responsibility with Haruka, but that's all. You are the one that I love, Mitsuki. Okay, I've had just about all I can take of this. Get used to this, because it's how they're going to portray Takuki's inner conflict between Haruka and Mitsuki for the duration of the series. Actually though, they must be communicating it effectively even to a minute degree, because I actually picked up on it at all. However, the problem here is that Takayuki is saying one thing, and then his actions are completely contradicting it. That doesn't make him a conflicted character, that makes him a lying asshole. Now, if all we got was him saying this internally to himself to kind of actually change his mind and snap himself out of how deep he's getting in with Haruka while still actually dating Mitsuki, I'd be fine with it, but that's not what we're getting. He has openly lied to Shinji, his only friend, and the woman he supposedly loves and has been with for the last three years over a girl he dated for two months in high school. He's a flaming idiot! Anyway... We resume Mitsuki's incredibly enthralling business lunch with her once again getting emotional about the only important person in her life. Loosen up and things around you will loosen up too. What do you know about me? You think you've got me all figured out, but you have no idea what I'm dealing with. Well, I certainly do. Since everything's all about you and all that matters about these situations is how they affect you, let's find out just how many of them are actually your fault since you're incapable of figuring that out for yourself. 
first up, you're having issues with Takayuki because of how much time he's spending at the hospital and away from you. Well, that's only happening because you insisted that he visit Haruka. Takayuki didn't want to because he was afraid of what would happen, and lo and behold, he was right! However, you haven't actually tried to stop him from seeing her as of yet, so this ongoing problem that was your own doing from the start is now still your fault by not telling him about how it's affecting you. You are enabling it, so good work. Second, there's all the abuse you've taken from Akane. Well, we saw in a flashback, at least one, exactly why you deserve everything she's said to you. She thanked you with tears in her eyes for helping Takayuki, but in reality, all you wanted was for him to stop thinking about Haruka and focus on you because you loved him and your feelings were the only one that mattered. You didn't even try to get Takayuki to love you back before you literally jumped on his dick because, again, you only cared about getting what you wanted and you gave zero thought to how it would affect anyone else. So, in reality, everything you're dealing with is of your own creation and you have no one but yourself to blame for not making any effort to solve your problems. Third, your stupid backlash here is completely unwarranted. You can't not tell someone about your problems and then yell at them for not knowing what you didn't tell them. You bitch. Maybe you should consider dealing with your own problems then so that you don't have to be such a cunt so often. Did you two make some kind of wish or something? Oh, uh, yeah. Mm. How sweet. He's such a romantic. How are you old enough to work in this hospital? Why do you look like a 12 year old? Whatever, Dr. Valentard shows up smoking in the hospital yet again because this show is so realistic. And they allow Takayuki to see Haruka because these girls don't play by your daddy's rules. How are you doing? Um, great, especially now that you're here. Uh, it's gonna be all right. Is something wrong? I don't have food on my face again, do I? And that, as much as anything else, led to my drinking problem. What? Is food on your face an everyday occurrence? And why was it so shocking for Takayuki that he told Haruka everything would be all right? What? Why can't one scene make sense? Anyway, while Mitsuki gets blasted drunk, Takayuki hangs out with Haruka, encouraging her delusion. Mitsuki remembers absolutely nothing, and then... Oh my god. Sis, I forgot my book bag. Uh, uh, Akane, it's... it's not... Akane! You don't have any feelings for her! You don't know that. You know what? Fuck it! Fuck it all! Fuck it! Fuck it! Fuck it! So, nothing said by any character can be trusted. Good, I mean, that's perfect. What is the point of having Takayuki say to himself with total determination that he loves only Mitsuki and not Haruka with no sign of internal conflict whatsoever if he is then going to deny that he has no feelings for Haruka the same fucking day? Yes, this is the same day. Less than 24 hours later. What a two-faced shitbag. Welcome home, Takayuki. You're smashed. What were you drinking? I'm not drunk. I thought, why not get this apartment train rolling again? I found a nice place. It's a tad on the expensive side, but I think we can afford it. It's got a killer view. It'll go fast, so we need to head out there this weekend and take a look. Okay? I think Saturday would work out best, because then the... Wait, wait, not Saturday. I got a client. That's right. Is Sunday going to work out okay for you? Slow down. Let's wait on it. Wait. This doesn't make any sense. You're the one who said we should find a place together. You're the one who said we should find a place together. You're the one who said we should find a place together. If I didn't see it, it didn't happen. How is this even real? Why is this a situation that I have to even think about, much less comment on? 
Moving in together was Takayuki's idea? You horrible, horrible, lying bitch. You asked him about moving in together, and after he just said, why not move in with me, since you practically lived there already, you threatened to break up with him if the two of you didn't find a new place together. This was 1000% your idea. Sure, for no good reason, Takayuki had to convince you to find a place later on, but my favorite part of this is that she says they put the apartment search on hold because of all this drama. With all the drama around here, we had to put it off for a while. I thought, why not get this apartment train rolling again? Oh, is that what happened? Was this show edited out of order then? Because we saw you guys delaying your apartment search for several weeks in a row with no explanation before you ever found out about Haruka waking up. Whose fault was that now? Was that, was that also Takayuki? I'm sure that you'd also love for us to assume that because after all, we're not allowed to know or understand things about this show. It's all up to us to craft our own narrative for everything in our heads because we just care so damn much. But Haruka- uh, What does she have to do with any of this? What difference does it make if that sad little girl is better or dead? Why are you acting like a crazy person? Because that's how I feel, thanks to you. Nope. Let me tell you how I feel because of you. I want to reach through the TV and strangle you. This is how you feel because of him? What, you're not in charge of your own feelings anymore? It's Takayuki's job to express them for you? You feel this way because you have never, not even once, tried to communicate to him that you need him around more. So if getting drunk and screaming at him for, you know, once again, not knowing something you didn't tell him. I'm drunk, so what about it? I need something to turn to since I don't have you. Hyper-realistic! Well, I mean, now it's just hilarious. Yeah, that's not overtly melodramatic or anything. That's totally something a real person would say. I also have to point out in hilariously repeated fashion that not having Takayuki is something that is, once again, Mitsuki's fault because he asked her to go on a date with him and she turned him down to go get drunk. Well, you don't get to choose to get drunk instead of being with Takayuki and then give him shit for not being with you. Fuck off with your narcissistic manipulation and fuck Takayuki for actually buying into it. I just, I- You still love her. That's not true. Of course it is. I'm not blind by how you look at her. Oh, okay. You know how he looks at her. Fucking how? When did you witness this even once? That one time when the only expression on his face was open mouthed shock? Yeah, that just screams love. This is what happens when you just slam in cliched lines because you think it sounds good instead of actually trying to make sense. Hyper realistic. Mitsuki rambles on endlessly in drunken nonsense that I don't follow, causing me to wonder why I ever asked for her to express emotions in the first place. But really, it's only her bitching yet again about how the world is so unfair for her and how she's hurting and everybody feel bad for Mitsuki. Oh my God, her life is so terrible. Man, it's a good thing she totally, legitimately has it the worst out of everyone. Certainly not Haruka, the actual victim in all of this, and especially not Akane, who is constantly being hurt by the medical staff. Definitely not Takayuki and Mitsuki from all angles of the whole mess. No, it's Mitsuki whose life is in shambles because Takayuki came home late once. I, I quit, I, I'm done. 
Takayuki has some job offer at the restaurant, whatever. It plays into nothing for the duration of the series, so I don't care. Oh look, Akane's mad at Takayuki again. Who cares? Oh, and look, at Mitsuki's back. Did she slit her wrists in the bathtub? Oh, I guess not. But I've made a decision. I wanna live here with you, Takayuki. Okay. <laughs> Let me make sure I understand this, all right? You asked Takayuki to move in somewhere with you, and he countered by asking you to move in with him. This wasn't good enough, so you threatened to break up with him if the two of you didn't find a new place together, and he agreed. Then, you got a little downtrodden about it because of some pool flashback, and he had to reconvince you to do the super important thing that, according to you, <laughs> defined the history and future of your relationship. But now, now that you spent a month just not doing it with no explanation for us, the audience, it's been maybe, what, a, a week? or two, maybe, since Haruka woke up? And yet, tonight, right now, because Takayuki won't try to find an apartment with you while you're stinking drunk, that somehow drives your fictional woman brain to the conclusion that he must be more in love with her than you. And then, Coming to that conclusion is what convinces you to move in with him! This is real, right? I mean, clearly, the most important thing on their minds was getting to 14 episodes. It's amazing watching a plot completely unravel itself. But I've had all I can take for today, in case you can't tell. I hope you guys are handling this a lot better than I am. But uh, regardless, this has been 25 the hard way. I'm Will Ryan. And for the first time, I regret having to see you guys next time. Hey guys, Will Ryan here. If you're new to our channel, go ahead and click that little icon right there in the middle of the screen to subscribe. And if you want to check out more in-depth dissection like what you just saw, go ahead and click on one of the three previous seasons of 25 the Hard Way. Enjoy yourselves and stay skeptical.